So what about robotics? Everybody's talking about robotics nowadays. Well, I think that the most important thing is that in a lot of minds, something is singing. A lot of questions are singing in the, in the minds of people. Like, are really robots going to take our jobs? Uh, what are robots? What are the dangers? What are the opportunities? So I will try to talk about these questions, which are very often, unfortunately, answered in the wrong way in the media. So the idea that people had, I mean, automation and robotics have been in the mind of people for centuries. I mean, Leonardo already was thinking about built automatic machines, and also in, 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 the, in the show business, people had a lot of visions an idea about tedious jobs and what that could mean for society, and also about how machines could have helped us in, in automating certain tasks when, for example, we couldn't move our hands. Well, the reality is here. All the tedious and heavy job, for, for example, for car manufacturing, is done by robots. That's, that's now. And we are working on, on machines that actually will help us for if we are at home alone and we are old, for example, then you say, OK, why would I need a robot? Well, maybe you don't have any other options. The United Nations showed the demographics the evolutions, and there will not be enough people to take care about all the old people that there will be at a certain point of time. So one thing is certainly sure, that physics predicts the future, and robotics will make it for us. And robotics is changing very fast. The ideas of robotics was originally in, in a cage, far from human. Performance was measured with, uh, you know, machine speed productions. And robots were behind cages because they were dangerous. But things are changing. We're looking and going to a kind of robotics in which robots come close to humans. They have to interact with humans. So the performance is not anymore how fast something can move, but how safe it can interact with humans and cooperate with them. What you see here is reality. It's today. And if you notice that the humanoid there, when you see a humanoid, you think, oh gosh, we are so far already that we have humanoid robots going around. But notice it doesn't have any hands. And I will come back to that later. But on the other hand, we have here something about our robotic birds, which we won the Tech Transfer Award, the European Tech Transfer Award. It's a robotic bird that can fly 80 kilometers an hour. It can chase biological birds from places where birds are not supposed to be, like at airports, for example, because they are very dangerous for, for the aircraft. And then there is AI, like IBM Watson, that have been beating uh, at jeopardy some humans. But is that robotics? I think that humans and robots have very different features. Robots are very good in doing a lot of repetitive tasks, very fast, very precise, and they never get tired. Uh, but they cannot manipulate as well as humans at the scale of humans. At the same time, humans are much better to have a convey certain information, a grab all the information, a multi bottle cues that you have, vision, sounds, understanding feelings, looking in the eyes of people. We are far from having decoded all these features. But the most important thing is that what is actually a robot? That's the biggest problem that we are dealing with right now. A washing machine is not a robot. It's an automatic device with a very simple algorithm. A washing machine doesn't go around and interact with an environment which is undefined. Okay? And therefore, and is that has been a bad development in our technology? I don't think so. And I think you agree with me. At the same time, is a virtual agent a robot? It is not a robot. It's an algorithm. They use AI in order to display and to interact with something which is not embodied. When you're talking about robotics, you're talking about physical things going around, like the Google car, for example, which autonomously is able to interact and go and drive, or an exoskeleton, which makes possible for people to basically walk when they are paralyzed. That is what really robotic is. Or things like we've been working ourselves, new devices to, to, to really uh, tackle one of the biggest problems, like cancers, for breast cancer in women, which is the death number one in cancer in women. And we developed a number of devices for doing that. That is what robotics is. Or pipe inspections for gas mains where you cannot reach. Would you rather have an explosion and you see that indeed there was a leakage, or you rather have a robot that goes inside and predicts when the leakage, before the leakage actually happens, and on time you can prevent that that accident happens. 
So now let's go back to our robots going to kill our jobs. And I would like to, you to think about the wheel, for example. Okay? Is that bad that the wheel came because then some jobs have been lost? Of course not. We cannot uh, uh, fight technology. Technology is going to change our world, it's going to come. So we better think about the good opportunities that we can tackle with technology and robotics rather than look about the doom scenarios that the media are excellent in doing. And there is a colleague of mine at 88 from Stanford made a statement, which is reported is on the screen, which basically says that humans think that a lot of tasks that are complicated, like chess playing or Go, they think they are very complicated, but for machines are very easy. At the other hand, most of the people think that what a, a baby or one year or two year old boy can do is easy, but it's absolutely amazingly complicated for a robot. We are far from, from being able to do the same thing. So what are the big challenges in robotics? Well, on one side is intelligent and cognition. We know AI is all over the place. You hear about AI all over the place. But be careful. Google is crunching data. Okay? And there is one thing which is crunching data, and another thing is being able to fuse sensory perceptions like vision, auditory, motion, touch, being able to understand how the environment is and being able to communicate. We are far from that. We'll get there, but we are far from that. But one thing that we always forget, and the media always forget, is this. is the human hand, which is actually the, probably the, the most important thing that brought sapiens to where we are now. Okay? Because the human hand, most of the cortex, is actually used to steer this thing and to understand and censor these things. I'm not going to see a plumber in my house, a robotic plumber, since if I live 100 years. I'm half of the time now. If I still live 50 years, I think I will not ever witness a robotic plumber. So all those jobs that need manuality, we are far from having reproduced our human hands. People like it. So if you see a robotic hand, people in you know, the media say, we reproduce a robotic hand. This is not true. Be very careful about these things. So my vision, my way of thinking, is rather looking at the future as an opportunity and see what we can do with that rather than staying here and be afraid of what the future could bring us. And there is this sentence which I like very much and want to cite about Robert Kennedy. So the way I see is that evolution of robotics will be in two stages. The first stage, which, which I call the, the near future, is basically a situation like we are now. A lot of jobs will change. There will be new jobs formed because then robotics will make possible for certain job to exist, and people that have, for example, not a high enough education could do things that, were, that are needed, but they wouldn't be able to, to do without the help of robotics. And then, of course, we can look at the future. The future in the new world, what I call the new world, which is indeed, I, I don't think I will witness that, but then we will have, earlier or later, indeed machines that will walk around like humans, they think, they can do things, and will have robotic hands differently than the robot I showed right now. But then the question is, is that bad or is this good? Well, the, the world will certainly change at that stage, which is, once again, is not tomorrow, is over 30, 40, 50 years, I cannot see in the future. But the issue that we really do need to think about our political economical systems, because of course, robots will do the work for us, welfare will be generated by robots, but it's not that we cannot work or we should not work on we are not needed, in the very spirit of humanism, we will be able to do what we think and is good for us, what is good for humanity. But it is very important that the welfare that robot will generate will not be in the hand of one single big enterprise, like, for example, a Google or an Apple or something like that. We need a system, like a basic income kind of system, for example, which distributes the wealth in a proper way. And then we can be able to concentrate on the real things, because the only thing we will need is energy, a social balance. Energy is there, the sun is there, there is no, enough energy for a long time if we use it properly. But social balance is something that needs attention for the future. To conclude, I want just to say something about artificial intelligence. What is artificial intelligence? Should we use it? Should we be scared about it? Well, let's think about society now. You know, there are people that are crazy and do crazy things, right? And we have a system like a judge that, you know, and a police that prevents, try to prevent this situation. So what Asimov said 
is we need, you know, robots are there, should be there to help us. But, and we can enforce this by proper engineering. So when we'll develop AI and we will embody AI in robotics, okay, we will need a, a, a software architecture, an engineering system where some part of the system will basically be a judge and will observe what the AI part does. And when that comes out of a situation which is unsafe or, or creates certain problems, that part of AI should be shut down, like a guy who's crazy shooting around people should be put in jail. And this, in an engineering point of view, this can be certainly done and should be done. And that is what we should uh, drive technology with. As Einstein said, logic can bring us from A to B. And imagination can bring us anywhere. And robotics has those potential of actually doing that, because robotics is a very uh, a multidisciplinary field where all the bound of technology can come together. So call me crazy, but I think that we should call the, and get the opportunities that the robotics gives in order to go to the future. And instead of seeing as a threat taking jobs, just think about the fact that robots can help us curing cancer, that can help us having accidents, and maybe the public opinion would give a different swing about their thoughts. So even if some users still have problems getting used to robotics. My motto is that the sky is not the limit, but only the first layer. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>